Hello, loves. Who is with me? We're going to do some power principles today. And if you were with me um, on, there's my Emily. Hi, Emily. If you're with me on Saturday, we talked about power principles, but only briefly. And I want to go, I want to dig into them a little bit. And we're going to talk about what they all mean. So there's Jenny. Hello. Did you see Mark's uh, debut today? <laughs> Hi, Diane. Did you see his debut? It was pretty funny. I thought it was funny anyway. Hi, Susan. Susan's in Portland, right? I think I recall that correctly. Can you hear me okay? The reason I'm asking is my phone was on fumes. It just seems like it is not hanging in there long enough. So I thought I would just go ahead and take care of business and get it going. Yeah, he did a good job. I thought so too. He's a good sport. He said, you kept interrupting me. And I said, welcome to my world. And I said, not only that, I said, you're guest hosting on my show, dude. So just chill out. <laughs> It was pretty funny. We took, uh, we made those two pork loins and I took half of each one over to Marla and uh, Marla and Robert. So it was fun. We had a minute to, to chit chat on the porch, keeping social distancing, of course. I haven't seen her in so long. It was just like, yay, it was so much fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you can hear me. Joanne's here. Yay, Joanne. Brenda. Yay, yay, yay. So, um, should we wait for a couple more or should we just get going? I mean, I'm, I'm cool with that if you are. Because we do have 10 principles. I want to unload each one of them a little bit more than we did over the weekend. It's the same power principles that we had. And, um, you know, I think, you know, just going through it and understanding it a little bit better is, is super helpful because if these principles are embedded in our DNA and this is what we live with and live um, and have that express in our lives, I think it just makes such a difference. Yeah, it was really hard not to hug. But it was so funny because I haven't left the house in, I don't know, I mean, we've walked around in the yard and things like that, but, you know, really and gone down the driveway a couple of times, but you know, you guys, if, you, if you've seen my house, we have this very long gravel driveway, and then we have, like our yard is, we're on a cliff, I've shown you this, we're on a cliff, so we could just like, it, it, there's really no yard per se, there's just a lot, a lot of land, which is great, because uh, when we came here, we got rid of our lawnmower, we didn't have, we don't have to, there's no lawn to mow, which is just fine with me, and fine with Mark, but, um, you know, we're driving and as we got onto the, the main, when I say the main road, this is like still gravel road and there's cows everywhere. And there was, they were all huddled up. All the cows were huddled up. I guess they were getting ready to move them across the road to the other pasture. And it was really fun to watch. Um, they were all, you know, mooing and what have you. And then we see people walking and I'm this going crazy. Hey, there's people and cows and things. And it was just, you know, gosh, I think I, Mark looked over at me and he said, I think you've been in the house too long. So, yeah, sometimes you just are in the house too long. Hi, Marco. Good to see you. Glad you're here. All right. Um, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started on this because, you know, whoever comes back, they can always come back and, and rewatch anything that they, they've missed. Um, and I am going to write up these power principles and we'll get them to you. Um, at some point. Surprise, Jenny. <laughs> I didn't tell you this. But um, it's, I have 10, 10 power principles and I'm going to write them all up just so you have them and can keep them because um, what I have done is I've, I've written them up myself and I have copied them off and I have them in my planner, in my, in my uh, work planner. I use my Take Back Your Life planner for my, for my own personal growth. I use my, I have a, a big planner that I use for work. And so I have the, my power principles in there because they're just, they're right there. I just open it right up and there they are. I'm looking at them. So, um, and I like this because this is a reminder, <laughs> Jenny, 
I love surprises. Yeah, well, we'll you know, we'll get it to you within, you know, over over the course of a week. I think we could probably end up doing that. It's, it's there's not a lot here, but it's just having them so that you have an opportunity to um you know, just just have them as you can take your notes and what have you, but just have them, you can print them off and you can use them because they are super powerful. It always it's a reminder to constantly to be shift your, shifting your thinking because we all need to be reminded to shift our thinking. When we start to go into dark places and we start to not feel good, that's a first alert. That is the first yellow flag that you get that things aren't going well. And that's an indicator and a telltale sign that your thinking is wrong. And um, we all do it. You know, it's, I, I love what David Baer calls it unintelligent thinking. And nobody, the last thing in the world anybody ever wants to be is unintelligent. So if we get into this place of unintelligent thinking, we know what the cascade effect is of an unintelligent thinking. It takes us down an, a dark, scary path. And, you know, if you've been in the world of depression before, if you have know what it is to eat your feelings, and if you know what it is to just feel like nothing is worthwhile and you're out of control and, you know, you just you know, stuffing your feelings with food and, and, and just feeling just not like yourself and just horrible. That's an, the first, the first tip off, the first indicator is that you feel bad. And I like these principles because these principles give us the clues of what it is that's going to be your tip off that you're, you're, you're going there. And you know, it's sort of like, you remember when you were a kid and your your parents were like, get in the car, we're going to go see grandma or we're gonna go see Aunt Matilda or whatever. And you're like, oh no, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna get in the car. Well, and then when you grew up and you were an adult, you had a choice that you didn't have to get in the car and go see that awful Aunt Matilda if you didn't want to. This is what these principles are. It is an opportunity for you to decide to not get in the car. And as we grow up, and as we make decisions and, and we are no longer on autopilot and we are living in our mindfulness, we get to see this stuff earlier so we don't go down that dark, scary path. Does that make sense to you? That's what the power principles are all about. It's just like, this is what we do. It's sort of like if you've, you know, if we've had our coaching time together and we sat down and we went, okay, so this is what it is. And you know, these are the, these are my tender places. These are the hard things. And we make food rules that are customized for you because your food rules and my food rules are going to look completely different because we're different people. We've had different experiences. We have to customize things to make them work for you. Well, it's the same kind of a thing. This is an early tip off so that you can create your own rules and get yourself squared away so that you have an early warning system in place to keep you from going to the dark place, if that makes sense. So there are 10 power principles and I'll put them, like I said, I mean, we will have a handout for you and we'll put it in the membership area. Um, so, and I'm sure Jenny will remind you in Saturday's email um, so that you can have this. And my strong suggestion is that you copy it off and um, you, you even look you know read them on a daily basis when as you're doing your affirmations as you're you know, writing out your I am statements whatever it is that you do for your journaling time just take a look at them and read them and let them have their impression and what I have found when as I you know doing this personal development work is that you know, even though you've looked at that several times, sometimes something's going to leap out on the page and just, and you just go, oh yeah, there it is. You know, it's just one more piece of that puzzle, you know, and you've heard me talk about the, the puzzle, you know, when we're creating a puzzle in the first place, we've got a vision in front of us. We've got the, the puzzle box lid sitting there in front of us. And, you know, each one of us has a puzzle that while the principles are the same, the pieces are different. And the pieces could, you could have 2,500 pieces. I could have 500. You could have, you know, 10 pieces and it's a, just an easy puzzle to put together. It just really depends on your life experience. It depends on what you've experienced in your life and where you are with everything. But that's cool. You know, I mean, that's just, that's our life thing. And we don't want to compare 
but we, we use the same principles. We have a vision that we can look at so we understand what we're doing here, right? There's a big difference between putting a puzzle together, a 500 um, piece puzzle that has flowers versus one that is a mountain range versus one that's an ocean scene. You know, there's always some kind of beautiful scene that you're putting together. And when you have all the puzzle pieces in front of you, you can't determine what it is until you see the box top, right? You can't put a puzzle together, you know, in a baggie and just say, you know, good luck with it. I mean, you can, but it's gonna take you longer. When we have a vision, when we have something that we're looking toward, then we have the opportunity to really have in mind how all of these things apply. And the power principles essentially are the edges of, of the vision because they, they build a framework for how you're going to be building your vision. Um, and they, they, regardless of how many puzzle pieces you have, regardless of what your vision is, they stand firm because it is all about your power that's within. It's all about who you are and how you express it. And I believe that these power principle, principles divide and conquer a lot of the garbage that we get stuck in and sucked into. Um, for example, you know, we, we have a lot of, a lot of us have something like that's, that's a, just a continuous loop that we think about the same thing over and over and over again. And it's exhausting. It's not only exhausting, but it, it takes up so much space and so much energy. There's no room for anything else. And when it's taking up space and energy, your amygdala is going to be working overtime to make sure this is for, for the amygdala, even though it's it's awful, the amygdala is used to it. It's it's a known quantity for the amygdala. And that's what the amygdala does. It decides what the risk is. And even though it's uncomfortable, we don't want it or whatever, the amygdala doesn't want to do something new. It wants to keep you safe. Keeping you safe means nothing new because there's an unknown factor to that. And let's keep doing the same thing over and over again. And even though you're going to expect different results or you want to get different results, if we do the same thing over and over again, we will stay safe. And we know this, you know, this is why diets are so ineffective because it's people doing the same thing over and over again. You know what, the, you know, you know the drill on that. This is like, here's the new diet and here, get all excited about it. And then here, you're going to lose the weight. And then here, you know, just go back to eating the way you were and you'll gain all that weight back again. And this is why when I get asked the question, and I do a lot, how do I maintain? And I say to every single one, keep doing what you're doing. And they wanna know what they can add in. And I said, why do you wanna add anything in? You're doing what you need to do. Well, I don't need to lose any more weight. Well, okay, but keep doing what you wanna do and let your body make a decision. It's not like you're gonna lose so much weight, you're gonna be skeletal remains. That won't happen, I promise you. Your body will figure it out and you'll find your new normal and we allow that to go. And this is why it is so incredibly important that we stay with our principles. Our principles are our guiding light and they make sure that we're staying the course. They give us, they give us the, the, the structure and the framework, just like the, the edges of the piece, the puzzle, and it gives the vision, we have the vision in front of us at all times, so that we are able to live that way. And it gets, you know, I, I've said this before, and this is the absolute truth, we lose weight ounce by ounce by ounce. And sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's fast, it is what it is, and it's because our bodies need to heal and do some things that we can't even see. We have stuff going on inside of us that we're not even aware of. And this is why nutrition, it's never always about losing weight and just doing whatever you can to lose weight. There's nutrition involved. And the nutrition needs to be involved because there's things that need to heal. If we're going to lose the weight permanently, we've got to heal our bodies first. And we have to have respect for that. And as we lose the weight and lose the inflammation and start healing the bodies, the, the weight comes off and it is a permanent thing. So that's, a, that's the cool thing. And we've, I've got tons of clients that have had that success. So I, I think, you know, the power principles are at play here. Um, 
And I, and I, that's why I want to unpack them just a little bit more. What I'm talking about right now is just basically the setup for it. And I don't think I did, you know, it was toward the end of the day on Saturday. And I really wish I'd had a little bit more time. So that's why we decided to go with the power principles this time. So the number one power principle is that there are two ways to live, powerfully or pitifully, one way or the other. Now, this is from the quote, of course, that we got from Joyce Meyer, which is you can live powerfully or you can live pitifully, but you can't live both ways. Wait a minute. You can be powerful or you can be pitiful, but you can't be both, which is absolutely true. And we need to understand this, and this is why I'm always bringing you to a place of contrast. Contrast gives us, gives us a stark uh, visual, doesn't it? You've got black over here, you've got white over here. It's really easy to tell which color is which. There's no blend, you know, there's no blending there. This is white, this is black, you know, it's just, it's really simple. And even if you're colorblind, you can tell the difference between the two. And the contrast, when we contrast things like that, it's really easy for our brains to go, okay, yeah, I get that, that principle helps. Same thing with this, you can be powerful or pitiful, but not both. Black, white, but not gray. Same thing. So when you, when we say this, it is all about choosing which way you want to go. And when we say this, and when we say powerful, that means that if you're going to be powerful, that you're gonna find things that are in your life, that are belief systems, that are ideas that are relationships or whatever that don't fit into powerful they're more pitiful and so there's there's the conflict you have the conflict so when you choose powerful over pitiful and you bit you're in the you're in your you, the fr prefrontal cortex if you decided to be conscious about the way you're living and this is why you're in take back your life if you're going to be conscious of the way you're living then and choosing a powerful stance on something, whatever it is, then pitiful has to go away. And sometimes that means you have to confront those beliefs. What isn't working for you? Why are those beliefs there? Um, does that mean, you know, does, what, what does that mean for you? And I can't sort that part out for you. What I can say though is this, that when you make that decision, about being living powerfully, things are going to come in to your. It's it's like a fly fall, falling into your cup of coffee in the morning. You know that fly has nothing to do, has nothing to do with what you're trying to do here. You're trying to have your cup of coffee in the morning, and that fly has just completely ruined that cup. So you're gonna pour it out, go get a new cup. Probably not not just pour it out, but probably go get a fresh new cup and just start over. That's the principle right there. You have to make those decisions as you go along. And they will, as, as you make that decision to be powerful, that means you're making a decision to be conscious, to be, to be fully awake to what's going on and no longer accepting the 95% of autopilot that maybe you had previously done before. Moving forward helps you to, moving forward and choosing powerfulness helps you to do that. But it can't, help you to do that if you keep staying in autopilot. If you stay in autopilot and you're not living consciously and you're not being mindful with your meals and you're not being mindful with your movement and your hydration and everything, we're talking about the, the body clutter stuff, then, you know, the body clutter stuff is just for, for no cause, you know? It's just back to the whole thing of, of you know, binging on brownies and, and um, you know, eating Skittles at your desk or whatever it is that you do. Um, that's taking it, that's taking a, the, the road less, the road more traveled, right? The road most traveled in your brain. And so pitiful is stuff that maybe you did before, whereas powerful is stuff that is, is no longer working for you. Choosing that way is, is just the basics of the principle. And it, they will come, if you make that declaration and decide that this is what you wanna do, you are, are, you're gonna be meeting forks in the road that say powerful or pitiful. So just be prepared for that because this is when, this is what it is when you're living consciously instead of 
in your subconscious. Number two, your knowing tells you which way you're living. And this is going, this is triggered already. If you were part of um, uh, Full Bloom this weekend, this has been triggered. You understand about what that means. You understand that inside of you, inside your beautiful place, is your knowing. And your knowing doesn't know unless you're unless you're connecting heart mind and soul and you connect with those when you have power principles in your living power principles in your living are having your morning ritual having your evening ritual and and having that just be sacrosanct that this it just the just doesn't not happen you get up in the morning, you have your meditation time, you have your prayer time, you have your reading, you use your journal, and you are prepared and ready for the day. You're connecting heart, mind, and soul. You cannot connect heart, mind, and soul if you just get up and just go through the motions, start scrolling on Facebook, playing games on your phone, turning on the TV, and you know start yelling at the kids or yelling at your husband or whatever. There is no connection, there's no dig, there's no, there's no a blessing of your own little soul. There's no connection between you and your God. There's no nothing going on. That's why this is important because your knowing is gonna tap you on the shoulder and say, hold on guys, you're, you're, going, you're going to the pitiful zone here. And if you want powerful, then powerful has to have a ritual in the morning. Powerful has to have these habits in place. Powerful demands that you connect heart, mind, and soul. There's just no question about it. And when you get into the habit of doing this, and this becomes part of your morning ritual, and that you have that that time of of you know met, just just that whole time that is is just yours and is exactly customized just for you, the way you do things, then you're gonna know. Your knowing is going to show up. Your knowing is going to tap you on the shoulder and say, it's pitiful. Don't do that. Don't shrink back. I've told you this story before, and I, you know, believe me, listen, I'm not one for watching a lot of television or whatever, but we did watch, um, we're huge Office fans. We love The Office. And um, I can't even remember everybody's name, but, you know, the gal who played the receptionist then ended up with, um, I can't remember, except Dwight. Of course, I remember Dwight's name. But the, the whole thing of it is she was just this little wimpy um, receptionist. And um, she was engaged to this guy who was a real jerk and had kind of a crush on the guy in the, in the office. They ended up getting together later on. But in the midst of her finding her power, she was always one of these ones who would just roll over and let anything happen. And as she became more aware, right, out of her automatic pilot and more into the awareness zone, as she became more aware, she started speaking up for herself. She found her voice. She started becoming um, more present in what was going on. And before, she would accept anything. Well, one day after work, they're at this bar and she's getting beers. They, the, the, the bartender gives them the wrong beers. And she's grabbing the beers and she was going, oh, wait. And then she takes the beer. And then it was just like, no, back to meek, back to pitiful, grabs the beers, starts walking away. Then all of a sudden, her knowing taps her on the shoulder and says, wait a minute, that's not the beer you wanted. And she went back to the beer, to the bar and puts the beers down. And the bartender said, do you need something? She said, um, yes. And she was very nervous about it. That's not what I ordered. I ordered X, Y, and Z. And he goes, oh, okay, no problem exchanges them and she's walking away and she's got a big smile on her face and I love that example because to me this is a woman who's starting to have power tap her on the shoulder instead of shrinking back not having a voice and being just this little mimsy mamsy whatever you want kind of a thing she's speaking up she's speaking up for herself and she's finding her power. That's how we find our power, is we use our voice. 
you know? And again, we don't have to be harsh. We don't have to be shrews. We don't have to be horrible. We don't have to nag. We don't have to do anything like that. That's, that's, that is pitiful to me. That's kind of, that's, that is just, you know, unmitigated primitive living <laughs> is what that is. We, we just, we need to intelligently, um, and, and you heard me talk about unintelligent thinking. Intelligent thinking tells us that we use our voice and we use it in a positive way. Excuse me, this is, an, this is not what I ordered. I ordered X, Y, and Z. Can you fix that for me, please? And we're done. You know, simple things, and maybe this is easy for all of you, but for me, it took me until I was in my 50s till I finally did that. You know, walking out of my hairdresser's appointment <clears throat> one time, I remember walking out of there and just, no, everything's fine, everything's fine, walking home and then getting home, crying my eyes out. Everything wasn't fine. And not saying anything is pitiful. And it doesn't mean that I needed to decimate or, or crush or scream and yell or be horrible to my hairdresser, but I had an obligation to her to speak up and to say what was going on. Avoiding confrontation is pitiful. Avoiding confrontation is something that we all want to do, right? It's not fun. It's uncomfortable. Let's acknowledge that. But it's pitiful if it stops us from doing the things that we need to do. It's pitiful if it crushes us and it keeps us in a tiny, small, pitiful place. Powerfulness is speaking up. Powerfulness is living the life that we have been called to live, but we've been, but if we're pitiful, it's because we're afraid to live a powerful life. And that's what I find so much with women that I'm talking about, about finding their power, is that we have been in this place of being afraid to, to speak up. But if we're going to live our lives with these power principles, if we're going to light up our knowing, we're going to light up our knowing only by lining up mind, body, heart, soul, the whole bit, and being faithful to those morning rituals and even the evening rituals, which sometimes can fall off a cliff. But you can do it in bed, you know? You, can, you don't have to necessarily write down, but just like think in bed to yourself. You know what? Um, some, some, a couple of things that I am happy about, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then that's, so those are some things that you talk about just so that you can reinforce the good stuff of your, of your day. And then the second thing that you can do too is that you can, um, you know, course correct even and say, you know what, tomorrow this is what I'm going to do. Now, if you don't, don't beat yourself up for it, but living powerfully helps you and, and those that use take the take back your life journal for this because if you can create those morning and evening rituals, you've created bookends for your life and that creates automatically not automatic pilot, but that creates for you a, a whole new sense of being powerful. You've given you your control back. Number three is pitiful living is suffering and stressful. Now, I know that there are some, and I've coached some of them, who have... Um, stuff in their lives that are just, it, they're just not, it's not fun. It's, it's not, it's not easy. It's, 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 it's really stressful. Taking care of somebody in, who depends on you is stressful, but it isn't suffering if it's loving. Um, I have a few clients that I have, um, I have, you know, spoken to about this very thing that they have these stressful situations of taking care of either a spouse um, with medical conditions or even dementia um, or a, an elderly parent with dementia or taking care of a disabled child or whatever it is that they're doing. And what I have seen and what I have noticed is even though it is a stressful thing, they're not pitiful about it because it's all wrapped up with love. And I used one time a gal in um, who's in the Hot Milk Club as an example because I have I had such admiration for her 
on the way she was she, with two kids who are disabled. It was really hard. And then she helps her daughter, who's not disabled, take care of her grandchildren, take, take care of her children. So she's taking care of grandchildren. And she's all over the place. And you know, when I say that we are all called for a purpose, she has found her purpose. She, it, it isn't that she's getting run over. She is doing everything with love. She is filling these two little children, these two little grandchildren with love and being a loving influence while her, her, their mother is at work. She is lovingly taking care of these two disabled children and she's busy. It is stressful. She has, we worked out a schedule so she could carve out time for herself, but she's not doing it in a suffering way and she's not doing it pitifully. She's doing it lovingly and, and this, is, this is the place that we need to come from. If we, even if we have these hard things, um, we need to be doing them lovingly. And one more story about that because, um, you know, when I was dealing with my mother and uh, it was, for a while there, it was really, it was difficult because here was this strong woman that now suddenly needed me to give her a shower and to um, not only bathe her and you know help her brush her teeth and put her pajamas on and all of that, it that was that was really rough. And for a while there, it was just you know I I, I had real mixed feelings about it because well she was my mother you understand that, and at, it got to the place of of just not you know really dreading it just really dreading it. And what saved me was making a shift to the fact that I kept thinking about what she did for me as a baby, changing my rotten diaper and, you know, bathing me and all of that. And it just, I, I worked hard on that. And I remember one of the last times that um, I put her pajamas on and put her into bed and all of that was, um, but, you know, shortly before she died, and it was just, I had, remember I had tears running down my face because I knew we we're getting toward the end. And there was no suffering on my part there. It was all loving and it was very powerful. And this is the thing that can happen to us is we can move into that place of powerfulness even in the place of great stress. So I wanted to mention that because I think that's important. Feeling bad and suffering is a choice. It is always a choice. We do not have to have that happen. And when we feel we start to suffer, when we start to feel bad, we can shift it at any point. And this is where a body clutter buddy I think is so important because body if, if we're in that place and we understand <clears throat> and you're talking to your body clutter buddy who understands these principles like you do, that you can look at it and you say, well, you're feeling bad and you're suffering. You remember the power principles, this is a choice that you're making. Because the sooner we can snap out of it and snap ourselves back into the place of being powerful, the sooner it is that we're going to go to the place of, of uh, our knowing. And the sooner that we do that, we, we are gonna fill that place, our beautiful self, with love and with power and with creativity and with ideas of what can we do? How can we work our way out of this situation? How can we speak to this person? Um, what is, you know, there, there's so much going on in this world, especially right now, um, that, oh my gosh, Mary, that's so beautiful, from, sa from scared to sacred, that's exactly right. Things go that way, and I think a lot of times too, when we get frustrated and we're suffering and we're worried and we're this and we're that, that it's due to fear. And fear is the opposite of love, not hate. Fear is the opposite of love. So if we can look at how do I flip the switch to become instead of fearful, instead of a hand wringer, instead of into this whole place of being so pitiful, how can I be loving instead? And I think if we're in that mode and if we are living in that powerful mode, you see, just because even though these are the power power principles, it doesn't mean that we're not going to be in find ourselves in this place, find ourselves in this place of being scared, uh, find ourselves in the place of being fearful or suffering it somewhat. It just means that we have a means to get out of it. 
we're human beings and we have great vast uh, um, different varying feelings you know they go from a to z but just because we feel one way doesn't mean that that is that's the way it is you know it doesn't mean that our feelings don't necessarily convey what's really going on our feelings are just a feeling so let's keep that in mind um if you have number five is if you have consistent pitiful thoughts that feel bad you're living in the past and you know on my show yesterday i believe it was i was talking about this because the past the past has an, an enormous capability of keeping us captive, of not giving us the freedom that we're looking for. And the past um, is, there is not a darn thing we can do about that past. We can't go back and, and rewrite things. So the most important thing that we can do then is remind ourselves, again, this is just one of those snapbacks that says, you are living in the past. And if you're living in the past, that means you're not staying right here in the in today. And today is never, ever, ever going to come again. And it's it, too, is going to go into the past and be looked at from behind. But wouldn't you rather live in today and enjoy that? Wouldn't you rather embrace today and have those, you know, the, the miracles in the moments? You know, I, I love this so much. And this is what can lead us if we choose to. Number six is you cannot have a powerful life from a pitiful perspective. They cannot coexist. That's exactly right. Jenny just said it. Yes, allow the feelings, but don't keep them. And also allow the feelings and, don't, and understand that it's just a feeling. It isn't a principle. Feelings can't be your guiding light. Feelings just, they come and they go. And if we go by feelings, you know, we're, I've, I've shared this before, there's a lot of prisoners in, there are a lot of people in prison because of a of, of bad feeling. You know, they, they, they made a knee-jerk reaction to a bad feeling like, you make me so mad, boom, you're dead, you know, and, and, <laughs> and what do you have here? You know, that's not going to work. So that's why I say this. I think it's really drastically important to understand that the feelings are going to come but you don't have to park there you know you don't have to keep your car in that spot you just need to move it out allow the feelings to come and allow them to give you the 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 yellow flag that says hey this is what's going on so straighten some of that stuff out number seven is transforming from pitiful to powerful is a decision you make decisions daily. You make decisions daily. What am I gonna eat for breakfast? What am I gonna wear today? Who am I gonna call? What's on my to-do list? Am I gonna wash some clothes? Am I, you know, what are you gonna do? We make decisions every single day. And when we make a decision to transform, that means we're gonna take away from, we're, we're gonna go back to the decision-making process. When we make a decision to transform, we have to go back to square one. Square one is, you know what? I don't like this, this isn't working, therefore I'm gonna go this way instead. It is a definite fork in the road. We go powerful or we go pitiful, but if we're gonna transform from pitiful to powerful, it's decision-making all the way. And I'm gonna tell you something too. It's a little bit of a bumpy ride because things start to come up. It's when you make that kind of a decision, there's a big shift in your head. There's new pathways that need to be created. There's a lot of Oregon trails in there. You know about that. But it is, it, it is the, the most freeing thing that you can do. And when you decide that, and when you understand that it is merely a decision and you are not a victim to pitiful living, you don't have to be if you don't want to be, then that decision is so much easier to make. And, and that's not to say that there will not be a lot of cha-cha-cha back and forth. You know, I mean, two steps forward, eight steps back, and then you keep on doing it. But if you don't quit on yourself, if you keep working on it, if you keep holding fast to it, it's not a, it's not a big deal. And this is a place, too, 
of unplugging from the emotion. Because if you unplug from the emotion and say, look, I'm just making a decision. I'm making a decision just for this moment. And that's how you do it. It is moment by moment. It is not, I'm making a decision for the rest of my life. I'm going to be doing this and that and this and that. You know what? That's all well and good. And you can write it all out in your journal and you can put it all together. But there's going to be some falling off. There's going to be some, well, that didn't work out too well, did it? Or... You know, and, and talking to your body clutter, tick, 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 you know, texting, oh my gosh, you just wouldn't believe what today brought. So what? We're going to be living these days anyway, day by day, as many days as we've been given. And if we're, if we're in this place of understanding that we can just keep plugging it back in and just shifting a little bit and changing things a little bit as we go, we are going to be making powerful decisions. Powerful decisions require decision making. And so do pitiful decisions, right? But a transforming completely from, from pitiful to powerful is just a decision. Just a decision. That's all it is. It's not like, I don't know how, what am I going to do, blah, blah, blah. No, you don't. It's just making the decision that I am not going to be pitiful anymore and I'm going to live in the my my conscious i'm going to live presently i'm not going to be looking back i'm not going to be i'll look, be looking forward gratefully that there's there's something on the horizon for me but right now today this is what i have and these are the decisions that i have to make this is how i'm going to structure my day these are the things that i'm going to eat this is how i'm going to move my body all of these things and even if you don't get them all right you know it's still an excellent decision and that excellent decision is going to is going to be the thing that that creates your future number 8 the moment you recognize your thoughts being pitiful you can immediately return to a power, powerful state by saying no to pitiful now i don't know about it. That sounds really like, okay, you know, kind of a thing. But I want you to understand how powerful this principle can be. When you are in this state, when you're looking at your power principles and you're having this be a part of like who you are and you're just reading them and even reading them out loud to yourself <clears throat> and listening to them and using all five, you know, using all five senses is always like the very best thing and the best way to get things locked in. But reading it, you're using your sight, saying it out loud, you're using your voice and you're hearing yourself. And it just, it kind of, it starts to get into your, into your thinking. This is, this is the way that you do it. So when you say you can, when I say you can immediately return to a powerful state by saying no, I have a strong suggestion for you. And I had, I can't even tell you how many times I've done this because this is what caused me to lose a whole ton of weight. Now, I, you know, I, I'm not at my, my very lowest weight of where I was, and I'm certainly working on that now. But it caused me to say, hey, um, you know, I had a, a moment where I chose powerfully, and I said to myself, I want my body back. Because I felt like I was living in an alien's body. I was 237 pounds. I, I was very uncomfortable. I was full of inflammation and I had all this stuff going on. I didn't like what my blood test numbers looked like. There was a whole bunch of stuff. And I said, I am going to take back my body. It was a very, very powerful movement. It caused me to create this program and it made me understand how important saying no to things were, how important it was to talk to yourself. Because I looked in my mirror and I said that aloud to myself and I looked myself in the eye. I know it sounds really scary. crazy town, but I, I honestly, this is, this is the truth. And so when something comes up like that, you know, we can do all the things like cravings or whatever. We can do all the things. You can call a friend, take some L-glutamine, um, run around, the, you know, go do some crazy exercise. There's lots of things that you can do. But one of the most powerful things that you can do so that you're not going to slide back into pitiful is you can go look yourself in the eye in the mirror and say to yourself, you don't need donuts or whatever it is that you, you, this is, this is, this is going into pitiful. You don't need this. 
And, and I'm telling you, look at yourself in the eye. It, it, it is, it's kind of a weird thing, but it is so freaking powerful because it brings you to the place of understanding that this is not what you want. And then you don't, you, believe me, you do not leave that bathroom and, and just pray to God that nobody in your house hears you. <laughs> it might be a little strange. But it, this is such a powerful thing because you are confronting yourself and you're saying no. You're saying, no, this is not going to work. No, this is not what I'm going to do. No, no, no. You've just flipped the switch and you've said yes to powerful by saying no to pitiful. And you've confronted your own pitifulness of going, oh, just this one time, just this one donut, just this once, I'm going to whatever. Go in there and say no. One of the things that I have done with a few of my clients, you know, and for myself, you know, is <laughs> kitchens closed at night because I'm listening to the clap. I explained that um, when we had our, our event on Saturday, but it, it's also, it's just like, wake up, wake, wake up. This is what it's about. That's powerful. You looking at yourself, that's powerful. And if we're going to get rid of pitiful and live powerful, powerfully, we have to keep the reminders up. This is work. I'm not going to lie. This is work. But they're power principles. They're to take you from here and put you over here. There is a huge contrast here between powerful and pitiful. Pitiful is just, it is not what we want. We've done it enough, right? And, and my belief system is that having a constant steady stream of diet books, diet programs, diet this, diet that, diet food, diet, all the BS that, it, that is around the diet culture is pitiful because it is, it's an industry taking advantage of, of people. It's preying on their pitifulness. You want to look like me with my six-pack abs? You want to be gorgeous like I am with this, that, and the other thing? You're pitiful. Take my program, and then you can be powerful and look like me. That's what it's all about. And when you, when you understand that that's a whole culture that we have said no to in this program, and if you notice what we talk about, yeah, we talk about diet. Yeah, we talk about weight loss. Yeah, we talk about all these different things. But I know without a shred of doubt, without one tiny bit of doubt, that if you don't handle what's between your ears, if you don't have these power principles in place, that there's always going to, you're going to be prey to any predator out there in the whole diet culture. Because at the end of the, at the end of this, this whole program, my goal is that you have your goal weight, but my goal is also that you wait, you walk out of here with a life that is so sparkling, so spectacular, so powerful that you're going to feel like not just looking so sm s darn good in those darn jeans, <laughs> but you're going to have a life that is just not even going to be anything representative of what you were. I mean, you know, same house, same husband, same everything. But you're going to be in a different place because you're not going to be living pitifully anymore. You're not going to be just showing, showing down your, you know, cl clamping it down and not being, not speaking up for yourself. You're going to be living in a way that's powerful, in a way that has vision all over it, and in a way that lifts up and brings people with you. People are going to be attracted to you. They're going to be saying to you, there's just something about you. There's just something about you, Mary. There's just something about you, Amy. There's just something about you. This is what living powerfully does. Number nine, and I'm going to finish up by eight so that we all have time. Number nine is living in a powerful place. You can tap into all the resources God has for you. And I told you at the very beginning of full bloom, that everything that you need is inside of you already. Everything that you, I want you to write that down about 800 times. Everything I need is right inside of me. You don't need willpower. You don't need supersonic diets. You don't need, you know, crazy town. You don't need any of that. What you need, 
Maybe you maybe need a little bit of information. Maybe you just need a little inspiration. Maybe you need a little tap on your shoulder. But it's all within you. And all I'm saying to you is it's time to start realizing and recognizing the resources within because the resources inside of you, those are the most powerful things ever. And we already discussed the whole thing on willpower and what have you on Full Bloom, and I hope you wrote this down a lot. There is no such thing, you know, in my opinion. It's all about environment. It's setting yourself up with an amazing environment. You know, we don't have, I don't have a cookie problem in this house because I don't have anything, one, to bake cookies with, or two, we don't buy them. My environment keeps me safe. If you keep your environment safe, you don't have to you don't have to go back into the willpower se section, you know? If you've got a bunch of crap in your house, you're going to eat it. That, that's all there is to it. If if you're w living with somebody else who has a bunch of crap and wants to eat a bunch of crap, then you got to move it. That's all there is to it. That's a powerful move. That is a powerful move. So, I want you to constantly be thinking about what's inside of you. And as you start to go into pitiful, I want you to say, no, no, pitiful doesn't work here because I have everything I need already inside of me. And I want you to get excited about that. And as you are excited about that, as you're doing your morning ritual and your evening ritual, as you're putting all of these principles in play, then all it's gonna it's gonna be you're gonna start tapping into these things. You're gonna start seeing just evidence for what I'm saying right now that you are powerful, that you're not pitiful, that you do have the resources, that you have everything that you can possibly need inside of you. You're gonna have a mad. You're gonna have suddenly have this idea. You're gonna suddenly meet somebody. Even you know one of these days we'll get out of our houses. <laughs> suddenly, some, they're all gonna fall into your lap. And I know that sounds just like, okay, you know, I'm not giving you promises like manna from heaven or anything like that, I promise you. But I know this to be a fact. I have seen it, I have experienced it, I have, it's unbelievable what happens. So I just want you to keep this in mind because as we go through these things, as we have these things happen, that God is just gonna place together the right people, the right circumstances, the right everything believe it and believe and know that it's all in within. And the last one is number 10, living in a pitiful place, your only resources are limited to your own pitiful thoughts. This is the whole thing right here. When you have pitiful thoughts and when you don't have the resources that are within, you don't have the resources that are in your beautiful self. You don't have, you're not tapped into your knowing. You're not tapped into your intuition. You're certainly not tapped into God and the Holy Spirit. You're not tapped into your beautiful self. You don't understand empathy. You don't understand the bigness of love and the, and the grandio grandiosity of love. You don't understand any of that because you're so focused on this pitifulness. Pitifulness is, this pitiful living is tiny, and narrow and hard and and all focused on you and your circumstances. It doesn't have room to look beyond the pitifulness. It doesn't have room to go be go out there and to and to see the vision. Being powerful gives you an opportunity to say, you know, not a girlfriend of mine, I've shared this one with you and this this is so powerful you guys. My friend Jolene, who's a doctor, who is on the other side of COVID-19 right now. Now, she is a wellness doctor. This woman knows what to do, and she's been doing IVC, um, vitamin C IV, she's been doing everything, and she's finally on the other side. It's just a, been a really tough bat, um, battle, and it's why it's such a, a really bizarre and obscure virus. Um, but she kept saying, you know, in the worst times, she said, you know, she would say to the virus, not today, no, sir, not today, not today, virus. Because the vi she, she was scared, she thought she was gonna die. Not today. And this is what you can say to pitiful talk, to any kind of pitiful thoughts that you're having. Mm. Not today, pitiful thoughts. Not today, victimhood. Not today. Just put it, tell them no. 
When we say no to pitifulness, when we say no to, to all of that garbage, we're saying yes to ourselves, we're saying yes to the people we love, we're saying yes to the type of life that we wanna live, and we're saying yes to the much bigger picture, the much bigger vision that we have for ourselves. Being powerful is huge, and when we have power in our back pockets, when we have the power principles in play for what we're trying to accomplish in this year of taking back our lives, then we have, we, we've got the framework. We've got the pieces of the puzzle already put together, and it's just a matter of putting those pieces in. Diminish, don't dismiss, but diminish the pitifulness. Diminish it. Accept it when it comes in and just say, okay, there you are again. I know you. But I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to give you time. I'm not going to give you all of the stuff that I've given you in the past. I'm going to cut it off. It's like a bad boyfriend, right? It's like no, nope, just not not going to do it. Not going to do it. I choose to be powerful, and if you choose to be powerful, you're choosing yourself over victimhood. You're choosing yourself over uh, living pitifully. You're choosing yourself over a life that's not what you want and you choose a life that's vibrant and a life that you want to lead always asking yourself this question is this creating the vibrancy in the life that i want to lead because if you're living in with these power principles it is it just is it's that simple and i wanted to uh, unload those just a little bit more because i really feel like if we live in the contrast of between being powerful and being pitiful and we understand what pitiful looks like and I would even invite you as an assignment to take a, a paper and put you know you know the old make the list the pro con list or whatever but take a piece of paper put a line down the middle and write down everything that's powerful that's in your life on the other side write down all the things that are pitiful in your life and then maybe even make three columns and I want you to do, what can you flip? How can you flip that pitiful thought? How can you fit that, flip that pitiful thing that's going on in your, in your head or pitiful thing that you're doing in your life? How can you flip that and start writing those things out? And at that point, you got a game plan. At that point, you've got something to be held accountable for if you're talking to your, to your body clutter buddy and, and I just, again, I just want to say and wrap this whole thing up with a big fat bow and say to you that it may take some doing. It will take some doing. Anything worth doing takes extraordinary effort. But it's worth it. It is worth your time. It's worth your effort. And it is by every stretch of the imagination, anything good, that in my life that I've ever had, anything that has been just extraordinary has been the result of a lot of work and a lot of effort, and it means something to me. Having something handed to you, I mean, you know, having something handed to you just isn't, isn't the same thing. We've heard spoiled kids and all of that. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna be effective. But if you work hard for it and you believe in it, and you put something behind it, it's gonna happen. And, and I just want you to, but I also want you to have a lot of gentleness, a lot of grace with yourself, and I want you to allow for the process. The process is going to take you there. The process of going through all of this is going to shine the light on the things that you need to see. Remember, an unexamined life is not worth living. You want to have this life. You want to have this life that is that is so glorious and so wonderful and that blesses everyone around you. You will if you choose powerfulness, if you choose the power principles. All right? Love you guys. Love you a lot. Take care. Have a great night. You bless me. You bless me back, Diane. I appreciate you. Bye-bye. I'll see you tomorrow at 1.